hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to learn something about event handling now a event is nothing but when we are using our android application and when we perform some action like if we tap a button or if we drag and drop something onto the screen or if we double tap the screen then an event is said to be occurred now while developing our android application we need to use certain concepts for handling those events and those concepts are nothing but they are called as the event handling so event handling is basically used in order to handle the events which are caused due to the user interaction. If you're here for the first time, please don't forget to visit my page and subscribe to the channel. You will find that on my channel, there are more than 500 video lectures based on PHP, Mel scripting, Maya, Maya embedded language, uh, 3D graphics from developing HTML, CSS, JavaScript to working on Android, Photoshop, multimedia technology and so on and so forth. So these tutorials will be very helpful and very productive for you. So don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon and receive notifications regularly. So in this tutorial, what we are going to do is that we are going to handle a simple event of clicking a button or tapping a button on your Android application. So basically in this tutorial, what we are going to do is that we are going to have a large text and we are going to have a button and when we tap the button or when we click the button the content of the text is going to change to something else so without wasting any time let's get started with the tutorial so the first thing which you need to do is that you either have to create a new project or you have to clean up the code from the previous project so for example in this i have removed each and every method which we have used and in the content mail.xml i have removed each and every widget which was present on our activity screen so once this is done the next thing which we do is that as we are going to need large text we simply go to widgets drag this large text and drop it right over here now also we are going to need a button so go to widgets drag a button and drop it on your screen now once this is done let's say we want to change the text of these to something else so simply click on it and go to properties and let's say this says hello world the next thing which we do is we go to the button, select it and inside the properties we change the text to let's say click me. Now once this is done the next thing which we want to do is that we want to set IDs to the text as well as button and that is because whenever we are using event handling it is essential for us to mention ID for each and every thing which is present in our activity screen so that while handling the events we could easily identify those. So in order to set the ID, we simply click the element. So for example, in this case, we want to set the ID for the text right over here. So we simply click on it, then go to properties and we are going to find the property which is named as ID. So as you could see, we have the ID as text view. So we need to change it. So simply click on it and change this to, let's say my text. And we are going to do the same with the button. So we go on to the button and we want to change the ID so instead of a button we give the id as my button now once we are done with this as you could notice when we click on the text or when we click on the button you could have a little light bulb over here and which signifies that we have a warning so the next thing which we do is that we want to remove this warning so you simply click on the text or you click on the button and you click the light bulb and then just click on this arrow and then click on extract string resource now you want to name the resource something so for the text let's say we name the text as message text so once this is done we click on ok now we do the same thing with button so we click on the button click on this bulb right over here then click on this arrow and click extract string resource and let's say we name it as button text then we click OK. So once this is done, uh, the next thing which we do is that if you want to change the text of either this or this, we simply go to our app folder and inside the app folder, we have a folder which is called as resources, which holds the resources for us. And inside this, we have the folder which is called as values. Now, once we open up the values folder, we have a file which is called as strings.xml. So this file right here is going to store the strings for us so we simply open the file so as you could see we have our text as well as button stored right here in form of a resource so let's say you want to change the text or if you want to change the button text you could just delete the previous text so let's say we want to change it to hello 
and let's say we want to change the button text to let's say click here so we simply make the changes to the strings.xml file and as you could notice when we switch to our content mail.xml the text has been changed now the layout part of this program has been done and the next thing which we do is that we design the main logic behind our application so in order to do that we go to this main activity.java file and we remove the imports which we don't require so as to clean up the code so as we don't need this we delete it and we also need to import certain things in order to handle the events so the first thing which we want to import is that we want to import the view so in order to import view we type import android dot view dot view and we are importing this view that is because we are going to need it while handling the event so when we are going to use the view in the event handling you will understand the significance of the view now we are also going to need the button and text view so we type import android dot widget dot button and we also import the text view so we type import android dot widget dot text view now once we are done with this the next thing which we do is that we write the java code for handling the event but before directly jumping into the code i wanted to explain certain things about event handling so basically event handling consists of two parts the first part is going to be listening to the event which is also called as the event listener and the second part is called as the callback method so what happens is that the event handling usually has a event listener which is always going to listen to the event so that when the event occurs it is going to call the callback method and the callback method is going to consist certain lines of code which is going to be performed when that particular event happens so basically the event handling part is divided into two things the first thing is going to be the event listener which listens for the event and the callback method which is eventually going to execute certain lines of code when the particular event occurs so in the previous tutorial what we have done is that we have created the simple interface so that we could use this as an example for event handling so what we are trying to achieve here is that when we click this button right here the text right over here is going to change so now let's go ahead and let's get started with the tutorial so the first thing which we need to do is that in order to handle any event we need to first add an event listener and then we are going to use the callback method so the first thing which we need to do is that we need to detect the event which has occurred so in order to do that the first thing which we need to do is that we need a reference to the button so in order to get the reference to the button we simply use the id of the button so in order to get reference we type button and then the name of our button is my button then we type equals in brackets button which is used for typecasting and then we find the button by id so in order to find the button by id we use a method which is called as find view by id so we type find view by id and inside the id we are going to specify the id of the button so we type r dot id dot my button and we are going to have a reference to our button due to this line of code now once we have a reference to our button the next thing which we do is that we need to add up an action listener to the button so as in this case we are working with the click option or the click event so basically we add an on click listener to our button so in order to add an on click listener to the button first we specify the button name so in this case the button name is my button and then in order to add up on click listener to it we give a dot operator and then we type set on click listener and it is going to add up an on click listener to our button now the next thing which we want to do is that we want to add a callback method inside this on click listener and a callback method is basically a method which is going to get called when a click event related to this button occurs so in order to set up a callback method the first thing which we need to do is that we need to create an interface now in order to create an interface what we do is that we type the keyword new then we type button then we give a dot operator and we type on click listener and it is going to add up the interface for us now once this interface is set up we are going to go ahead and we are going to add up the callback method into this interface so in order to create a callback method we type public void on click and in the parameters we are going to use the view so we type view 
and we name our view as let's say v and inside it we specify the code which we want to perform so the first thing which we need to do is that on click of a button we want to change the text of my text so we type text view and let's name the text view as my text then we type equals and in order to typecast it we type text view again inside parentheses so if you know java you could understand what typecasting is and we go out of the parentheses and then we type find view by id and as we are going to need the id to the button so we type r dot id dot my button and now once we are done with this the final thing which we need to do is that we need to change the text of the large text so in order to do that we type my text which is name of our text then we use a method which is called as set text in order to change the text so we type my text dot set text and inside double quotes we specify the text which we want to display so let's say we type button click now i think i have by mistake added this parentheses and the semicolon so i go ahead and delete it now once this is done we save our code now I think I have done a simple mistake right over here. So this actually should not be my button. It should actually be my text as we are going to change the text of the text view and not, not the button. So here we type my text. Now once this is done, the next thing which we do is that we save the code and we run our code onto the emulator so as to check if we have done everything correctly. So let's go ahead and run our application on the emulator. So as you could see, we have our application up and running on the emulator. So the text which it is displaying is hello and the text on the button is displaying click here. Now, if you click the button right here, the text here is going to change to button click. So basically we are successful in creating an action listener for this button right here. So when we click the button, the text right here changed. So we are successful in creating our application. So basically we in this tutorial we have used event handling concepts in order to handle a particular event. So basically an event is nothing but so, some user actions like click of a button, double tapping a button or any other activity performed by the user. So basically in event handling we have two parts. The first part is going to be the event listener and the second part is going to be the callback method. So basically a uh, event listener is nothing but it is a listener which keeps on listening for some event to happen and when that particular event happens it is going to perform a set of code which are being listed inside the callback method. So in this tutorial our main intention was we had a text right and we had a button right here and when we clicked on the button we wanted to change the text right here. So what we did is that we have added a click listener to this button right here so that when the click event happens we change the text. So in order to change the text what we have done is that inside the callback methods we have specified the code in order to change the text of this text area right here. How you could add multiple event listeners to a single activity. Now in the previous tutorial we have handled a single event and that event was of a button click. So in order to handle a button click we have used a listener which is called as the on click listener so on click listener is basically a listener which identifies when a button is clicked so what we had done in the previous tutorial is that we have created the on click listener we have created the interface for the on click listener and then we have added a callback method into it so what used to happen is that when we used to cl click this button right here the text here would change now in this tutorial we are attempting to add one more action listener and that is going to be the long click listener now the long click listener is different from the on click listener so for example when we click the button once the on click listener gets activated or it detects a click but in case of a long click listener when we click this button and hold it for a few seconds the long click listener is going to get activated or it is going to detect a long click for us. Now in order to create a long click listener the syntax is pretty much the same as the on click listener but there are few changes at some places so in order to create a long click listener we initially give the button name which is my button then instead of using the set on click listener we are going to use set on long click listener so we type dot set long click listener and inside it we are going to specify the interface so the next line of code which we type is new button as we are going to add it to the button dot on long click listener then we are going to give two curly braces and within these curly braces we are going to write in our callback method 
So the callback method of the long click listener is going to be a bit different than the on click listener. So basically instead of public void, this method is going to return a Boolean value. So in order to create a callback method for this, we type public Boolean as it is going to return a Boolean value, either true or false. Then we type on long click and inside the parameters, we specify the view as we have done in the above case. And in curly braces, we are going to specify the line of code which we want to execute. So in this case, when a user holds on the button for a long period of time, for let's say a few seconds, two or three seconds, then we want to display that this was a long click. And the text which we are trying to change here is going to be the my text. So basically, we need a reference to my text. So we type text view my text equals and we type cast it. So we type text view and then we type find view by id and inside it we specify r dot id dot my text now once we have the reference to the text the next thing which we do is that we set the text of this text view so in order to do that we type my text dot set text and set text is basically a method which is used to change the text and inside it we type long button press now once this is done the next thing which we need to do is that as this is a boolean we need to return some value so at the end we type return and we have to return some boolean value so let's return the value true so we type return true now once this is done we are pretty much done with adding the long click listener so we save the code and we execute it on the emulator so as you could see our application is up and running on the emulator so when i click this button right here the text changed to button clicked and when i click and hold this button right here it is going to display the long button press and that is because we have used the long click listener which is used to identify long clicks so that's how you implement multiple event listeners in a single activity so in this tutorial what we have done is that along with our on click listener we have added another action listener which is nothing but the long click listener which listens to the longer clicks so right below this action listener we have added up another action listener so the basic structure of both the action listeners is one and the same there are a few changes such as the name of the listener and finally the major difference between the two listeners is that the callback method for this listener actually returns nothing so it is specified void here but in case of the long click listener we need to specify or we need to return the boolean value so what we have done is that we have simply returned the value true at the end of it. so that's it for this tutorial and i hope you guys understood how you could add multiple action listeners to an activity so that various activities could be detected separately so thank you very much for watching this tutorial and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you